What's up folks, welcome back to part two of this entire playlist. In this entire video, we're gonna technically do the same thing where we're gonna kind of break the backend into its own separate folder and we're gonna try to deploy this backend application into Heroku. If this is your first time on this channel, this is where we help you become a full stack developer. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and we'll be right with you after the pause. But before we go in, this entire part two is going to be divided into four different steps in order to get it done. So step number one, navigate into wherever your folder is, navigate into your Merge stack application. Again, make sure that you're navigating into the folder that has everything combined together okay in this case we no longer need the client we only want to focus on the back end so i'm going to copy everything here that are related to the back end i'm going to copy this right click and copy and i'm going to go back into this space i'm going to create a new folder and i'm going to call this one back end again you can feel free to name it whatever you need to what we're doing here is we're separating the back end by its own and then the front end by its own right here so i'm going to go inside the back end and paste everything that i had right there again everything that i've copied related to the back end i paste it in there that was step one for step number two i'm going to open my terminal and i'm going to navigate to wherever this back end is i'm going to go in inside the desktop inside of learning the couple and backend once i am sure that i am inside this backend i need to open this one inside vs code again all this command does is open it inside my vs code for me and there we go this is now inside vs code now remember we are still in step number two and step number two can be a little bit challenging because not only we open this one into vs code we need to do a couple of things number one we need to navigate wherever we have our packet that json wherever we have this file we're gonna remove every single instance that this backend is referring to the client. Number one, we're gonna go here and remove this code because this one is going inside a client folder, which no longer we don't have a client folder because the backend it's by itself. We're gonna go ahead and remove all that script. Number two, we're also going to go ahead and remove this script again because this one is referring to the client. Again, it's going to the client and then run npm run build. We no longer have that, so we're going to remove that. So technically, a lot of things that I'm going to remove is I'm going to remove the Heroku post build again. That's referring to the client. Remove that. I'm going to remove this entire client. It is going inside the client folder and do npm start. I'm going to remove that. And lastly but not least, I'm going to go here and remove and remove everything except leave the node mon right there and there you go ladies and gentlemen so technically the bottom line is every references that you have inside your packet that json that were referring to the client go ahead and remove every single one of them because you no longer have access to that client folder the last thing i need to do in order to complete step number two i need to go inside the server js and wherever i have any references again to the client folder which is in this case we no longer have that build folder i'm gonna go ahead and remove all of that and there we go ladies and gentlemen we are now done with step number two all right for step number three we're gonna do a couple things just to make sure that everything is ready to go for our application to go to Heroku so what I need to do is number one is we need to check the port so this is important in order for you to deploy to Heroku you definitely need to process that env that port that also is connecting to your app that listen this is something that you need in order to deploy to Roku. Again, if you have no clue why we need this, definitely check out my entire playlist where we explain all of that. But this is focusing more into showing you how you can connect the pieces together. Second, we also need to make sure that we have this process that env mongodb underscore URI as well, because whenever we're gonna use our our ads on to connect to our MongoDB, we're definitely gonna use that in order to connect to our database. All right, once we have that out of the way, I'm gonna do a very dummy little thing here. And this is just for testing purposes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a route in order for our application when it goes to Heroku, I wanna make sure that at least I know that I can quickly test that to verify that my endpoint or my URL is indeed working. So I'm gonna add a very basic route, the starting point here, and I'm gonna send a very basic response such as something like rest and we're just gonna send a very basic message something like 
hello well again this route is just there for testing purposes which means whenever we deploy our application to Roku we can quickly test and see which endpoint we are using if our application is working as ex expected also need to add the two prime here with request and rest and ladies and gentlemen we are done with step number three now for step number four this is where we're going to be doing everything in order to make sure that this backend goes exactly to Heroku. Now, do not forget to do npm install. You want to make sure that every single of your dependency is installed. Once I've done npm install, I'm going to go ahead and initialize a Git project. You need to have Git initialized in order for you to deploy to Heroku. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add something here, an extra file, adding that Git ignore file. And the whole reason I'm adding this is because I do not want to push my node module to Heroku. And that should be taking care of the node module. All right, once that's out of the way, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a Heroku app. So I'm going to go here and create a Heroku app Again, you need to make sure that you have a Roku install before you run this command. Do Heroku dash V. If you see this, that means you have Heroku installed. If you do not see it, that means you don't have Heroku installed. You unfortunately won't be able to run Heroku create. Again, watch my entire playlist to learn how to deploy this. But if you do not want to deploy to Roku, that is also totally fine. You can deploy your backend wherever you need to. In the last part of this video, we're going to definitely walk you through how you can connect them together. I'm going to give this app a name, something like Mern App Example Sterling and click enter. And there you go. This has successfully created the application for me. Now, all I need to do now is go ahead and do a git add and git commit and add a message, git push to Heroku. And once that's done, all I need to do now is git push Heroku master. And that should go ahead and deploy our application to Heroku. And there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, our application has successfully deployed to Heroku. Now to verify this, I need to run Heroku open and that's going to open a new tab with the URL of my application. And if you guys remember the exact route that we added into our server for testing purposes, which I'm talking about this one, and there you go, you can see that this opened our application into Heroku, which means everything is working as expected. The last thing that we need to do to complete step num number four, the next thing we're going to do is we need to add what they call a Heroku add-on. An add-on is something that gives us a database or different other services that we can work with Heroku. For this one, it's definitely going to require you to add your credit card. However, I added my credit card and I have so many free ads on that I use and they never charge me not even a cent. So you can feel free to go into Heroku, go log in and find out where you can add your credit card. If you already have this set up, you can feel free to follow along with the command we're going to run. Or if you're deploying this to an entire different service, that's definitely up to you. And here's what we're going to do to add that ads on. Again, this is a MongoDB ads on. This is not a MySQL. If this is a MySQL, you're definitely going to get a different ads on, but we are using a MongoDB here. Okay. So I'm going to do Heroku ads on create Mongo lab and sandbox and click enter and there you go ladies and gentlemen your ads on has been added and you are now completed with step number four of part two of this series all right so before we go to part three which is the fun part okay before we go to part three let's review everything we've done so far let me give you guys a demo of what we've done okay so we have our backend deployed to Heroku this is a demo of what we are looking at right now and we also have our react.js application deployed into Zyte again this is a demo of what we are looking at right now the only thing missing is they are not connected part number three is going to focus on how we can connect them together Oh, finally. Oh, whew, it's getting 